Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the ultimate and the most awaited session of the Pen Ultimate Day. Through difficulties and problems, God gives us the opportunity to grow. So when your hopes and dreams and goals are dashed, search among the wreckage. You may find a golden opportunity hidden in the ruins. A belief held by the present convention's guest of honor and our beloved Honorable Ex-President, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, who has consented to be with us today. <laughs> Welcome, sir. It is an honor of the greatest measure to have you here at Trinity 2014. An all Maharashtra Students Medical Conference, Trinity had begun with a mission to bring together doctors and learners both young and experienced on one platform with an objective to foster learning, promote interaction and celebrate inquisitiveness. We thank our reward dean, Dr. Avinash Supe sir and Dr. Suhasini Nagda ma'am for convoying sir to the days. I request Dr. Nagda ma'am to felicitate Dr. Kalam sir with a sapling. A big round of applause, please. That is our annual souvenir, Trinity Oracle. Another round of applause, please. May I request our esteemed dignitaries, Dr. Supe sir, Dr. Nagda ma'am, Dr. Pawar sir and Dr. Dusya sir to kindly occupy the seats down. Yes sir. Yes sir. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, the 11th president of the world's largest democracy and an awardee of the coveted civilian award Padma Bhushan. Padma Vibhushan and the highest civilian award Bharat Ratna has also been honored with several other accolades. <laughs> He's also been honored with several other accolades like the Werner Von Braun Memorial Award, Woodrow Wilson Award, which has undoubtedly led to the recognition of his 79th birthday as World Students Day. An inspiring and ebullient force. The missile man of India is here to stir our souls up with the fire of conviction, with the fuel of the belief that no dream is impossible. Without any further delay, let me invite Honorable People's President Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam to address the gathering. French good evening to all of you. Uh, first of all, I would like to greet all of you on this great occasion at Trinity 2014. It's a beautiful name, Trinity. And also, I'm sorry for the delay because my flight got delayed. So that's how I landed here, nearly 40 minutes later. I would like to greet uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Suhasini, Director of Medical Education, Major Hospitals, Mr. Sanjay Deshmukh, 
and uh, Ravina Subey, Hamant Dushi, Dushia, and Sudhir Pawar, Dr. Sudhir Pawar, all you doctors and students, everybody, I am very happy to meet all of you. Uh, friends, can you hear me, all of you? Uh, now, you know, when I see the student, medical students, nursing students, and various fields, and also doctors, I see in front of them large hospitals, uh, clinics, and people, patients, and also equipment, great equipment, medical equipment for diagnosis and treatment, all appear in front of me. When they appear in front of me, one great man of this country, connected, all of them together he connected. Hospital, patient, medical equipment, and the doctors, paramedical staff, every aspect he connected, beautifully connected. You want to hear how he connected? You want to hear? The patient is the most important visitor to the hospital. Can you recall who said that? The patient is the most important visitor to the hospital. He is not dependent on the hospital. The hospital is dependent on him. He is not, he is not an interruption in the hospital's work. He is the purpose of it. He is not an outsider to the hospital's business. He is part of it. The hospital is not doing him a favor by serving him. He is doing us a favor by giving the hospital an opportunity to do so. Can you think of the person? Mahatma Gandhi, you are right. Mahatma Gandhi has said, you know how beautifully connected, you know? Can you see that? The purpose of uh, health service, how beautifully that uh, father of the nation has connected. So I am, uh, friends, with this I thought of starting. I am indeed delighted to address the students uh, participating in the All Maharashtra Students Medical Conference, I understand, you had Trinity organized by the Logoman Yathalak Municipal Medical College and General Hospital. My greeting to the President, Dean of the Medical College, and the other members of the Trinity for this unique event with the motto, Think, Testify, and Triumph. Of course, you can add a research also there. I understand the emphasis of the conference is on research. With this thought, I would like to talk to you on the topic dimensions of healthcare and dimensions of healthcare. That's my topic for next 25 minutes. I'm going to talk to you. First and foremost, the dimension appears in front of me, culture of excellence. After all, a doctor, when he sees the patient, the diagnosis starts, you need excellence. When you treat, you have to diagnose that treatment has to be the right disease you have to treat and with the minimum cost, minimum time, and you should go fast to return home. So everywhere you friends, you need a culture of excellence. Friends, you all belong to a student community which will stand for a culture of excellence. And the excellence is not by accident. It's a process where an individual 
or an organization or nation continually strives to better oneself. The performance standards are set by themselves, that is by yourselves. They work on their dreams with focus and are prepared to take calculated risk and do not get deterred by failures as they move towards their dreams. Then they step up their dreams as they tend to reach their original targets. They strive to work to their potential in the process. They increase their performance, thereby multiplying further their potential and this is an unending life cycle phenomenon. They are not in competition with anyone else, but themselves. That is the culture of excellence. I am sure each one of you will aspire to become unique with culture of excellence. Now, friends, I was asking myself, is there any inputs and research, which is coming from both physio, psycho and brain researchers. Because of the advent of neurosciences, coupled with quantum theory, quantum theory physics, neuroscience, your, your area. I studied recently a book, The Secret Path, by Paul Brenton. According to the author, now the conscience is explained scientifically for the reason that the thinking process and the biological process converge through quantum mechanics. He says that the physics and biology are interlinked and that atomic level, at, at, and, uh, quote, at atomic level, matter does not even exist. It only has a tendency to, to exist. Now, recently, a friend of mine, who is a scientist, sent me a book, Biology of Beliefs by Dr. Bruce Lipton. Every one of you should read students. Biology of Beliefs, Biology of Beliefs by Dr. Bruce Lipton. The author is one of the greatest scientists in the bioscience. After 20 years of research, he attributed the origin of human diseases and their cure have a basis on our intrinsic thinking and the relationship with our bio cells. The book talks about a new approach which highlights the importance of placebo effect how it is actually a powerful belief effect. The author says, quote, doctors should not regard the power of belief as something inferior to the power of chemicals and scalpel. They should let go of the belief that body and its parts are essentially stupid, unquote. Friends, let us first discuss six virtue of medical science. After all, when you practice medical area, I thought of starting with the six virtues of Medicare. Giver must possess the Medicare. Medicare giver should possess that. Friends, I would like to share an experience which Rinpoche, the chief monk in Kathmandu, Nepal, and a medical researcher, he is a medical researcher also. At our, with his invitation, I went there. After nearly a kilometer walk, I reached the Void Kumba where the chief monk and his disciples were waiting to receive me. After reception, the chief monk said, let us go to our study room. I followed him. He climbed the first floor, the second floor, the third floor, the fourth floor, and the fifth floor, just like a young boy. Probably the lifestyle has positive impact on the mind and body. All along, I was following and following. When I reached his chamber, 
I saw a laboratory and a spiritual environment overlooking the Himalayas. What surprised me was his research students come from different parts of the world. Particularly, he introduced me to his co-author, Professor David R. Schlim, MD, who is working on a research area, medicine and compassion. He is working on a research area, medicine and compassion. Medicine and compassion. The chief monk, Ripoji, and myself exchanged a few books. The monk has written with the Dr. David Schlim a book titled Medicine and Compassion. Small Every one of you can read it. I liked this book and read it during my journey from Kathmandu to Delhi. This book gives six important virtues which a medical practitioner has to possess towards his patients. First virtue is generosity. Generosity because in your theater of operation or the theater of action or diagnosis, you find pain. Everybody will be pain or some suffering. So your mind has to be generous. You should have a mind of generosity. The second virtue is pure ethics. That's the greatest thing in this country what we need, but particularly medical practitioner, the pure ethics, second virtue is pure ethics. Third is tolerance. Tolerance, when you go to the hospital or clinic, you find the smiles minimum. So only doctors and nurses have to smile. But the people who come, they don't smile. So you have a tolerance. Tolerance to the pain. Fourth is perseverance. You never give up. Doctor never give up. So many patients you will see. Perseverance, that is, he will succeed. And fifth is cultivating pure concentration. When you see a patient, that patient the most important person for you. And the sixth virtue is intelligent. That means you are continuously acquired the knowledge. Your knowledge, MBBS or MD, doesn't stop. It's a continuous process of acquiring the knowledge, intelligent. These virtues will empower the caregivers with a humane heart. I am sure medical students assembled here will have all these six virtues that will reinforce confidence of the citizens in the healthcare system of the country. Now, friends, I was looking at last year, 2013, what is the medical research, very important research, has happened. So in 2013, in cancer research found a sea of change in research and development. According to the Science Journal, Advancement of Science, promising results emerged from clinical trials of cancer immunology, immunotherapy. Immunotherapy is a very important area at their last year research results. Immunotherapy in which treatment target the body's immune system rather than tumors directly. The treatment pushed T cells and the other immune cell to combat cancer. So far, this process works only for certain cancer and a few patients. It is considered to be a most important scientific breakthrough, though the ultimate impact on the disease is not known. It was reported the results so far have been highlighting the success. Some of the success stories includes Women with a grapefruit-sized tumor in their lung from melanoma alive and healthy 30 years later, 13 years later. 
six years old near death from leukemia, now in third grade and in remission. The man with the metastatic kidney cancer whose disease continued fading away even after treatment stopped. Many of the cancer immunotherapy resolve around, you will know, the CTLA-4. Blocking CT, CTLA-4 could unleash the T cells against tumor cells in the animals that finally erase tumors in mice. Because of CTLA-4 prevent the T cell from attacking the invaders with their full force. Another area of interest involves genetically modifying T cells to make them target tumors. In 2011, this strategy called CAR therapy electrified the cancer research and filed particularly uh, in blood cancers. Most of these therapies are remain experimental, as you know, and for which they will work best are still in research. Now scientists are busy in trying to identify biomarkers that might offer answers and thinking of ways to make treatment more potent. So immunotherapy, immunotherapy is going to be one of the future treatments for many of the diseases, including HIV and tuberculosis. Let me now visualize how a great health center should be. After all, finally you all disappear and join great hospitals, great health centers. Every hospital, according to me, and health center develops a unique core competence in healthy area because of experience of doctors, unique environment of the hospital. This leads to, this leads to accumulation of a lot of original clinical data. It's very important for the health center with partnership of research center in life science to develop a new diagnostic procedures and the cure for the particular disease. Then only existence of the hospital 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years are established. Dear friends, here I visualize a great healthcare center with the following characteristics. Number one, patient is the most important person in the hospital. When the patient enters, the hospital presents an angelic look. The, all the team members of the hospital always wear a smile. The patient feels that I am going to get cured. Reaction. The hospital consumes less electricity and less water by adapting a green building for all monetization tasks. The choice of the power source is solar and wind. The hospital premises are totally noise free. All the reports and treatment schedule get attached to the database of the patient through electronic medical record without the need of the patient or the relatives to search for the reports. The database is updated and authenticated every hour. Maintains the database of all the cases treated by the hospital in the past which are, which are easily triable. Patient is not subjected to diagnostic pain. Patient is not subjected to diagnostic pain. That means uh, the patient when he comes and uh, when you diagnose, he give you a big chart, he has to do the x-ray, blood tests, urine tests, scanning, so many things when he give, you see the bill, the huge bill, he gets a pain. That's called diagnostic pain. <laughs> of course, you will not, you will not do that. <laughs> I'm sure none of you will do that. The patient is not subject to diagnostic pain. The surrounding of the hospital is green with full of trees with seasonal flowers. Further expansion of the hospital is in vertical mode, leading to a fast movement of the patient and the doctors for medical treatment. There is no case of hospital induced infection to the patient due to biocontamination. Actually, this is a big disease, biocontamination. 
The patient feels that this is the best place to get treated. The hospital is fully IT enabled, leading to virtual connectivity of the patient to the doctors, nurse, and the chief of the hospital 24 into 7. Hospital is also networked with other hospitals nationally, internationally, for seeking expert medical advice on a unique cases. The daily medical conference attended by the chiefs of the hospital, doctors, nurses, paramedics, and relatives of the patient with unique cases reviews problems of the patient, find integrated solutions. Friends, now, let me recall particularly for the benefit of young doctors, going to be doctors, about the lifestyle and contribution of three great doctors, namely Professor Ramamurti, which I know him, whom I know him, a famous neurosurgeon. Dr. Vengraswamy of Aravinda Eye Care Center, and Dr. Sudarshan of Tribal Healthcare, all three different areas. The, the pioneer neurosurgery, one of the greatest medical achievements of Madras has been the pioneering effort made to the established neuroscience in, neuroscience in general and neurosurgery in particular as a separate recognized specialty in the country. Professor B. Ramamurti established organized neurosurgery in 1950 and the Indian neurosurgery owes a great deal to him for the high standards of academic and clinical neurosurgery seen around the country today. He was a legend leaving behind a legacy which all neurosurgeons in India strive to follow, keep up and improve upon. Now, friends, he was a medical college, Madras Medical College. Of course, he got a Johnson gold medal and a well-decorated person. He became the fellow of the Royal College of Edinburgh. And after, after completing his training, Dr. Ramurthy, the tradition of a British, American, Canadian, European schools of neurosurgery. So he had all the experience when he started practice. And finally, he established for countries neurosurgery uh, science and technology, and thousands of people benefited. Now, friends, the next one, next person, I thought of talking to you, lead kindly light. I have known late Dr. Venkataswamy for over three decades. He is known for his silent contribution, bringing light to thousands of people. He has brought with the Arvind Eye Hospital in Madurai, the best of technology and management. He has established a network of Arvind Eye Hospital and also mobile clinics. I visited, I visited number of his centers. It was amazing to see how even in his 80s, he was radiating enthusiasm and perseverance for realizing the vision. Dr. Vengraswamy championed the community ophthalmology service in Tamil Nadu surrounding regions. Today it has grown into great complex eye complexes and uh, uh, Dr. Venkataswamy implemented his principle that the Aravind the hospital, eye hospital, must provide service to reach rich and poor alike. Yet the eye care facility must be financially self-supporting. The entire Aravinda high care system is conducting an average 800 surgeries per day. 800 eye surgeries per day. And annually treat over 2.5 million patients. They are providing for every 30 paid patient free treatment for 70 patients. Who, who cannot afford it? This principle is achieved through high quality and large volume care and well-organized system. Now, friends, I'm going to talk to you, third person, the tribal person, reaching the unreached. I don't know how many of you will serve the tribal people. You have to go away from the urban benefits. Reaching the unreached. In the present circumstances and the environment, it was inspiring to see 
how a MBBS doctor has put all his dreams in mainstreaming the tribal citizens of Karnataka for the last 25 years through Vegananda Krijana Kalyan Kendra at BR Hills from Mysore, about 200 kilometers. When I visited BR Hills in 1998 and subsequently 2006, I could see the substantial new developments in that area. I could see the new tribal hospital, roads, and the education environment of all the gaining capacity of the tribal citizens have been increased with the technology resource center as a base. Dr. H.G. Sudarshan, Dr. H.G. Sudarshan is the inspiring architect of the societal transformation. Now, friends, this Dr. Sudarshan has started this mission for tribal people. It's uh, spreading throughout the country, wherever the tribal people are there. And this, uh, he's a really role model. When we when see the life of Dr. B. Ramamurthy, Dr. R. Venkataswamy, Ramamurthy neurosurgeon, R. Venkataswamy is an ophthalmologist, Dr. Sudarshan, a tribal performance, a tribal doctor, who championed the cause of neurosurgery, prevent avoidable blindness and tribal health care. These are the three people have done. We are all inspired to study their mission of life. You have to evolve yourself and shape your life. You should write it on a page. Or each one of you should write it on a page. That page may be a very important page in the book of human history. You must say, in 10 years time, how my life will get transformed. You'll be remembered for creating that one page in the history of the nation, whether that page is the page of invention, the page of innovation, or the page of discovery, or the page of service. Now recently, friends, there was a meeting of cured heart patients, their doctors, and a few social workers I attended. One important point emerged during the interaction was that the relationship between the patient and the doctor extends to parents, patient, family also. Patient, family also. These in, in turn transmit effective messages from one family to another family on advice to the prevent diseases. After all, when a patient comes to a doctor, doctor diagnoses the disease and treats and the patient does not come alone. He comes with the family and friends. You become a doctor, become a teacher. And the disease, how incurred? How affected the person? How it can be prevented? And the, the, that's why doctor really become a teacher. Actually, I believe this good co contact between the doctor and patient is very valuable. It is more important to know what sort of person has a disease than to know what sort of disease a person has. I request every medical student to play the role of a teacher in advising every family on disease prevention and methods to lead a healthy life in addition to his or her regular medical responsibilities. The message is equally applicable to the nursing professionals and, and the other paramedics. Now, friends, in conclusion, medical profession is a noble profession. And it has always been a patient-centric. patient, patient -centric. The patient has the right to have a right type of medical care with the right type of medical practitioner. How does a patient know whether he should go to an ENT specialist or an allergy specialist or a chest specialist? He is made to go from one place to another in search of the right specialist. An integrated mechanism is needed to see that patient without frustration is directed to the right specialist at the right, or right diagnosis at the right time at the right cost. Let us try to apprehend the patient as a whole person and not know him as composed of distinct parts. 
which are created by our methods. The medical students should keep this aspect in mind while practicing this noble profession in rural and the urban areas of the country. Friends, you all abide by the Hippocratic Oath. The Oath prescribes standards of performance. The physician is, is enjoined to do no harm, to respond to self without attention to personal preferences, to keep confidence, to lead an honorable life, to use medicine only for cur curative purposes, and to desist from the exploiting the patient. Young professionals want to, be, want to do good work, yet they are all willing to cut corners sometimes. They, are, they tell themselves that when they gain fame and success, they will no longer cut corners. But they risk proceeding down a slippery slope from which they are unlikely to escape. Be cautious of not falling <coughs> in the trap of ill-gotten money. <coughs> Doctors are the noblest professional and they stand only next to God when it comes to remove the human suffering. Let this burden be always on, young, on your shoulders. Dear students, enriched <coughs> with the knowledge provided by the medical colleges, your heart is full of compassion and confident that you will succeed in the mission of removing the pain of the suffering humanity. May God bless you all. Thank you. <clears throat> no, I, I have not finished. I have not finished. Please, please sit down. Please. One more minute. Few minutes, few minutes more. Now I have a award. Vote for medical students. Okay. Will you take vote? Yes. Okay. I love, I love. medical profession. Because, because it is a noble mission. I will follow, I will follow the motto, let my care remove the pain and bring smiles. I will always radiate cheer to give confidence to my patients and their families. Will you do it? I will be a lifelong learner. I will practice what I learn. I will train my team to be competent. I will deliver quality care with high standards, irrespective of whom I am treating. I will not, I will not introduce any diagnostic pain. Any if any patient any is unhappy, unhappy with my treatment, treatment. I'll find out the causes and, and try to remove the pain. I will work with integrity and succeed with integrity. I will work with integrity and succeed My national, flag my national flag flies in my heart, flies in my heart. And, and I will bring, I will bring glory, to glory to my nation. Thank you, friends. Thank you. <laughs> now, <clears throat> you can ask me five questions because I have to. I have to meet Pandit Jasharji, you know? Now, I have to go and meet him. I am going to home. So, five questions. Anyone ask? Yeah, yeah. Anyone? Yeah? Infrastructure, medical infrastructure there. What would be a message to the doctors here? See, um, our problem is the people go 1%, 2%, maximum 5%. Our problem is 95% of medical practitioners in the country, young fellows, they don't want to go beyond the urban areas. <laughs> you, know? you see the problem? Our tribal area has got 750 million people. 
75 percent of the people live in the 600,000 villages, okay? So we should have a heart to move the existing people, forget about the people who go abroad. If the doctors, millions, millions of doctors, we should get away from our, like uh, the, what you saw, the Sudarshan, Dr. Sudarshan, he went to tribal area and served, okay? So we should have a change of uh, mind, okay? Thank you, sir. Now this side, this side, this side, this side, yes, 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 man. Hi, sir. Uh, what I say, uh, my introduction is not important, but I want to say something. Uh, I have heart for patients, but the thing is, uh, I have decided that I'm ready to go any part of the world for the patient. Uh, if I get something like uh, somewhere, uh, any provision in some relation between politics and the doctors, like some, uh, like uh, doctors forming a political party and thereby, I mean, doing Are you a some doctor? Are you a doctor? Yeah, I am doing MD medicine from D.Y. Patel Hospital. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. What is the question now? The question? <laughs> Summar summarize the question. Summarize the question. Summarize the question. I follow what you are saying here. Yeah. The question is, ke, uh, do I have any provision in parliament or somewhere in politics where I can do whatever I want for the patient? Like, uh, see, I'll excel in my job. I have, I need some time. I'm not, I'm holding just MBBS degree. Right now, I am doing my residency from DY. But the thing is, I want something, uh, I want something from politics, like there should be some uh, party of doctors, like who, the people, doctors who are interested, who are there for the patient anywhere in well, the world. I follow your question now. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you see, I, you are MBA also, you are studying? Okay. MBBS. Eh? MD, MD. Sir, I'm doing MD medicine. I'll be done in one yeah. and a half year. See, I have a feeling what we need in the country, as a citizen I'm talking. See, once you go to MD, MD level, I want to practice specialized, you want to do the specialization you have done. So I, wa I want you to excel in that field, okay? That is the message I want to give you. Now, of course it doesn't prevent the entering into politics also. After all, politics is not untouchability. Politics is a very important thing. And if we are all, we are, politics is good for the nation, the nation is good, okay? Yeah. So we need good politician also. But it does not prevent a great doctor with all the experience, not a young doctor, with great doctor with all the experience, entering into the politics, changing the politics, okay? Okay? Yeah. okay. Yeah, question this side. Yes, 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 yes. Go ahead, go ahead, ask question. Yes, yes. Yes, you're working. <laughs> you are assuming it's not working. Okay. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Deepa, anesthesia resident in Sain Hospital. I uh, just to, uh, wanted to ask you this question. Uh, we are for long hours during night time, and uh, many times we have patients abusing us during night hours. We do understand the frustration of the patients, and at the same time, uh, maybe the security to the patient uh, for us or the infrastructure provided by the hospital. Something goes wrong and there will be a discrepancy between our service and what the patient is expecting from us. Then how do we work at that time? Well, I recently I visited John Hopkins. Have you heard about it, John Hopkins? That is one of the top uh, hospitals. They told me one experience and they also they put a, a CD to explain that. 
You know, one day in the hospital, John Hopkins Hospital, a child hospital is there, one of the child hospital, and uh, the nurse was looking after that child. And uh, mother also was there, mother also was allowed to stay with the child. And at midnight, the child developed a problem of a breathing problem. Now, nurses were told there is a mother anxiety, she said, my child is in trouble, you help the child, call the doctor. She phoned to the doctor, but it took some time, doctor arrived. By the time the child lost its life. Now this mother became violent. She witnessed the whole scene, how right time, right attention, it was saved her child, after all, child, her child. So she lost her temper. She said, I will go to the court. Let court of justice to come. But the, the dean of the whole hospital, John Hopkins, called her, told her, you tell me, the, what's the real problem, what happened? The mother explained. Then, you know, John Hopkins, every week, they have a doctor's conference, medical conference. That week, what are the essential things happened? Good things happened, bad things happened, serious things happened. It, every Monday they do two hours conference, all the doctors and medical staff. This mother has been asked to come and present a case study. You know, there's a greatness of the hospital. Mother went and explained the whole case. And the doctors also felt very bad what has happened. Then the whole system got changed with John Hopkins. It happened 20 years back. Now everything has happened that uh, how fast one can give the remedy. But a life lost because it's a time, time is getting there. So my feeling is which, wherever you are there, you have, you should know when, what to contact, who should come at the right time right diagnosis, right treatment should be given. This is the message I can give you, okay? This side, this side, so, this side, yes. Hello, sir. Uh, yes. Go ahead, go ahead. Good evening, sir. Good. Sir, I'm Dr. Maitri Patit. I'm doing physiatry. Uh, my question to you is... What are you doing? I'm doing physiatry, PMR, physical medicine and rehabilitation. Okay. Um, my question to you is not related to uh, medicine or uh, medical field, but it's general. I'm standing here as, um, um, as I read your books, as I read your auto, um, autobiography, and um, I, that gave me strength. But uh, sometimes you said about uh, that writing a page for, uh, uh, for the, what you want in uh, life, that page, and that page can be a history. But following that throughout uh, your life, and it's a journey basically, um, you, give, you get a lot of distractions, uh, you get frustrated because of the many things which happens in the hospital or as she said, the uh, discrepancies occurs. So um, how did you follow your dream, sir, and how, it is to, um, how, how did you manage to concentrate on, on the aim which you had in your mind? Well, it's a good question. Uh, for example, I, when I graduated aeronautics, I have a dream, I will fly, okay? I had become a pilot, Air Force pilot, that was my dream. With that dream, I finished my education, aeronautical engineering, and then I went to the board of uh, interview, at Dehradun Air Force Board for pilots. There were 
eight seats, 245 people, 1957 applied. I'm one of them. Uh, six days was a rigorous, rigorous test. The experiment, the trials, everything were there. Seventh day, result out. I was a ninth fellow. Yes, ninth sir. fellow. Yes, sir. Whereas eight posts only are there. But commandant told me, chief told me, normally we do the medical exam. Send <laughs> ninth, tenth fellow, you can stay. Both of us can stay there. In case medically somebody called you, disqualified, you have a chance. My fortune or misfortune, everybody qualified. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, eight sir. people, eight people, they got through. I was a disappointed person, okay? So that was a great disappointment. But you know, what I believe, when I failed in my interview, it's a big uh, dejection was there. Mind is disturbed because my first time interview, you were a failure. But fortunately, I have attended another interview. There, it talks about the how the aeronautical system can be built. The aircraft can be built. Any fly system built. There, I got selected as a senior scientific assistant. So I joined in. That led me to make a missile, that led me to satellite launch vehicle, that led me to that. Finally, when I became the president in 2002, I became the supreme commander of the Air Force. <laughs> so, I told, I told Air Force chief in 2006, I told him, Chief, I have one dream. I want to fly. <laughs> but I could not fly because I was not selected. He said, I will put a coat of Bengali. Why they have not selected you at all? <laughs> but that's not all. But he did the right thing probably. But the issue is, he said, will you go to the tri training? I said, yes, I will go to the training. Whenever possible, you tra train me. They trained me for a few hours of training. That went a few months. Finally, I flew SU-30 aircraft for a half a month. <laughs> so, the message is, dream transform into thoughts, thoughts result into action. No dream is a failure. Dream transform into thought, thoughts result into action. So thank you, friends. Wish you all the best. <laughs> Hello, sir. So sir, one uh, question. Sir, yes, guys. my question is actually not related to medical field, sir. Yeah. Sir, but I what, just want to... What are you doing? Yes, sir. I am in second MBBS, sir. Eh? UG, second MBBS. Second year MBBS. Eh? Second year MBBS, sir. Second Second MBBS, sir. Second MBBS, okay. Sir, uh, do you think it is possible to make India a developed country according to your mission 2020 without taking back the reservation criteria based on caste, sir? Well, I personally believe... I want to tell you, since you are driving through reservation, the whole question, I want to tell you, See, there are so many engineering colleges India had, 50, 100, today 500, 1,200. Like that it has increased, seat has become surplus. Reservation, no meaning. Okay, reservation, no meaning. Same thing going to happen. Medical area and also management area. Okay, medical area management number of seats going to increase. So once the number of seats increase, reservation meaningless, okay? Now, your important question is, when India will become economically developed nation, okay? With that background, I want to tell you, when the document India 2020 vision was written, in about 10 years back, 
At that time, our GDP was same like what it is today. That is less than 5%. Okay? We assume in our book, the committee, 500 experts, that is uh, India transforming into economic and developed, we need 10%, 8 to 10% growth rate of the economy. It happened by 2008, India was getting 9.5% GDP growth. Then because of the uh, world problems, both sides of Atlantic Ocean, the economic problem they had, so that came to us, now we have gone to below 5%. According to me, our wealth is in the rural area. Knowledge and wealth is rural area. Where 600,000 villages are there, our economy has to be transformed in the rural area. Our challenge is the rural area. Where 600,000 villages, 700 million people live. What I am proposing, what is called Pura. Pura means providing urban amenities to rural area, giving physical connectivity, electronic connectivity, and knowledge connectivity. Through Pura, uh, definitely we can, irrespective of what is happening in the world, we can develop the nation in a big way. I am pushing that idea, okay? Thank you, sir. Friends, law, so, um, law, sir. I have to go. Last question. Last yes, question. sir. Okay. You are the last uh, question for us. Yeah. Sir, uh, why is India? Eh? Uh, sir, <laughs> sir, I am a second year MBBS student. Mm. So, my question is, why is India amongst one of the top contender, uh, means uh, spending its uh, whole capital on military and weapons equipment. Instead of that, if they spend on development of infrastructure, education and manufacturing, what do you think, sir? About See, I have a feeling if you take India's 5,000 years history, I don't know whether you read Indian history, 4,550 years we have been ruled by others. Including Afghanistan, Afghanistan kings came and ruled this country. So we were continuously ruled by the neighbors or foreigners. Then the British came, French came, so many people came. Portuguese also came. All the people started ruling this land. Now, our economy, we are spending 7.5 to 8 percent for defense. Because safety of the nation, the protection of the nation, minimum requirement, we must have defensive uh, capacity. That capacity we are building through missiles, submarines, so many things, nuclear systems, so many things we are doing. This will make India safe. If you are safe and peaceful, India, then billion people work also. So billion people to work peacefully, we need, we need safety for the country, security for the country. That's how the defense expenditure taking place, okay? Thank you for the good question. <laughs> now, friends, for all of you, any question you have, uh, my mail is apj at the rate of abdulkalam.com apj at abdulkalam.com you send a mail to me 24 hours you get the reply god bless you thank you sir for your for your enlightening words i am sure all of us assembled here today have been inspired by a vision and will take home a part of the firm conviction and belief in the indomitable spirit of the audacious youth of a country and will do our part to achieve the dream of a new India. I would like to mention that we have amidst us Dr. Ramesh, Ramesh Bharmal, Dean of Nair Hospital. We are grateful to have you, sir. Opportunities like these are few and moments like these are rare. Hence, May I request our Dean, Dr. Avinash Supe, sir, to present Dr. Abdul Kalam, sir, with a token of the immense gratitude we owe him for addressing this conclave.
Thank you, sir, again. Uh, I request uh, the faculty, the students to kindly wait, be stationed at your places. Uh, let Dr. Honorable Dr. Kalam sir exit and then we take a move. A sincere request. A round round of applause, please. Well done, well done. Thank you, sir. Sir, third minor MBBS. We all done by students.